Praise the Lord. I praise and thank and worship God for it's been so good. He's helped us to enter into a new year, a new phase in our life. It's nothing but the grace of God that has kept us through the last year and brought us into a new year. So let's give thanks to the Lord. Let's praise and worship him. Let's pray that this year will be a year in which we overcome everything that comes our way by the grace of God, by the power of God and by the strength of God. Shall we pray? Loving heavenly Father, we thank you, praise you, worship you. Magnify your name, Lord. Thank you for giving us this new year. Thank you for the opportunity to worship you, Lord Jesus. Even though we are in different places around the world, Lord, you've given us the privilege to worship you, to praise you, to magnify your name. Cover us, Lord, by your precious blood. Help us to worship you from the depth of our hearts. Help us to surrender our soul, spirit and body completely to you. So that you will reign in us and through us. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Lord Jesus has taken the victory. And it is for ours to enjoy. Shall we sing this chorus? Celebrate the victory of the Lord. Celebrate, celebrate, celebrate the victory of the Lord. Celebrate, celebrate, celebrate the victory of the Lord. He has done mighty things yet again. Oh, he has done mighty things yet again. He has done mighty things yet again. Celebrate the victory of the Lord. It's a great joy to listen to the word of God. The Lord will speak to us this day. Today's reading is from the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 14. But thanks be to God who always leads us in victory through Christ. God uses us to spread his knowledge everywhere like a sweet smelling perfume. You know, victory, the word victory sounds so sweet. We all desire to be victorious in every area of our life. At this word of God, it says, always gives us victory. So the definition of victory should not be seen from the human standpoint, but from God's standpoint. Many times, what looks like a defeat or a failure is often the step to have victory in our life. That's what happened in the life of David, life of Moses, Joseph, disciples, Daniel, and we can go on. Let me just give you one example before we go forward. Apostle Paul was a mighty man of God who was used by God for his glory. 
He undertook three long special missionary journeys through which he established churches. And when he kept traveling, people were coming to know Jesus. But there came a point in his life where Paul was in a Roman prison. He was chained between two Roman soldiers. You know, from the human point of view, now this was a failure. This was a terrible setback. But the Bible says, none of our situations go out of control of God. God is still in control of every situation in our life. And you know the period in which Paul was imprisoned. At that time, he had the liberty to write letters to different churches. He had nothing else to do. He used to inquire, listen, hear about different churches and he used to write to them. Those letters are a part of the Holy Bible today. And 2,000 years after his death, the words of God that were spoken through Paul strengthens us, edifies us, blesses us. So what he actually went through was not a failure, but it was a victory in the eyes of God. Who does victory belong to? First Chronicles chapter 29, verse 11. Greatness, power, glory, victory and honor belong to you. Victory belongs to the Lord. Because everything in heaven and earth belongs to you. The kingdom belongs to you, Lord. You are the head, the ruler over everything. These are the words of David at the end of his life. He had reached a point where his kingdom was stable and Solomon reigned in his place. And as a man with so much of experience, his walk with God, he condenses and gives us a glimpse of who God is. That's when he says, Greatness, power, glory, victory and honor belong to you because everything in heaven and on earth belongs to you. The kingdom belongs to you, Lord. You are the head, the ruler over everything. You know, David's life was like a roller coaster. Anybody who would go through different uh, times of his life would not agree that he always had victory. But every step of defeat was a stepping stone to success. As I said before, David was forgotten as a shepherd while his brothers were serving in the army. In the eyes of the people, it was a time of failure. He had no professional career. But when the time came, all that David learned as a shepherd, God used to defeat Goliath. And David reached the point of a warrior. And now when he joined the army, what is surprising is that his brothers who were senior to him in the army were now juniors to him. Because it is God who placed David in the army. And God lifted David to be the king. But when he was anointed as king, he was chased around by Saul. David was running, hiding a long, long period of time. It was terrible. But through all of that, David understood the character of God. The nature of God. He started to worship God from his heart. Even during his time of distress, David sang psalms. Which now encourage us so many years later. So as people of God, what the world calls victory is not the real victory. We should learn to see things 
from the eyes of God. So David at the end of his life, he says, yes, victory belongs to the Lord. And then he goes on to say in 1 Chronicles chapter 29 and verse 12, riches and honor come from you. This is something which every person must understand. Because the human race is running after riches and after honor. You find problems because of riches. You find problems because of honor. People want positions. People want to be highly priced. People want to be appreciated, honored. People want more money. But the Bible beautifully says, Riches and honor come from God. So this year, as people of God, let us take a decision that we will seek God, seek to know Him better and seek His will. And all of this will be given to us. And David continues to say, you rule everything. And this is another great revelation. He rules everything. There is nothing that goes out of the hand of God. God knows everything. Every little thing that happens in your life. Every fear. Every feeling of insecurity. Every feeling of, you know, what happens tomorrow. All of it is known by God. And he goes on to say, you have the power and strength in your hand. So power and strength is in the hands of God. And when we trust him, you know, his power will be revealed in our life at the right time, in the right way. And in your hand is the power to make anyone great and powerful. So God is the only person who makes every person strong or powerful. As you listen to this word, you might be a bit dazed about how you are going to go through this year. Based on your experience in the last two years. But you know the word of God is coming to you. The Lord says he wants you to be still. The psalmist says in Psalm 46 and verse 10, Be still and know that I am God. If you want to know that he is God, we should learn to be still. We should learn to be still until we are still. We cannot know that he is God. Because we are doing something something or the other to handle our problems. It's not that you don't do anything, you just sit down and God will work for you. It's not like that. But as long as you are striving, you are struggling, you are putting your efforts, you are not focusing on God but on your efforts and yourself, your problems are continuing and your problems are remaining. The moment you turn to him and say, Lord, I'm going to be still, I'm going to quiet myself. I'm going to calm myself. There are people in whose minds the problems are running day and night. And you're juggling so many things. The Lord says, be still. Be still. Learn to be calm. Place everything at my feet. This verse goes on to say, I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Now I want to tell you one very specific thing. As people who say, we believe in God, we know God, we seldom know God. We claim to know God, but we don't let Him be God. We want to do something in our place. If you will let God do what He has to do in your life, you will see greater things than what you are seeing today. Let me explain this a bit for you. The disciples of Jesus left everything and followed Jesus. You know, they left their carriers, their homes, everything. And this one particular incident shows us that even though they followed Jesus, they didn't actually know him for who he was. Mark chapter 4 verse 35. On that day when evening had come, he said to them, let us go across to the other side. Now Jesus calls his disciples to come with him to travel in the boat to reach the other side. And a great windstorm arose, verse 37, and the waves are breaking into the boat, so the boat was already 
filling some of his disciples were fishermen and they knew the sea so well they know knew the boat so well so they must have strived tried but when it came to a point when the water was coming into the boat they thought it was time to wake up jesus all this struggling all this striving all their shouting and screaming nothing happened things were getting worse but when they called on to jesus mark chapter 4 verse 39 and he awoke and rebuked the wind and said to the sea peace be still and the wind ceased and there was a great calm so there are two be stills here one in psalms be still and know that i am god and here jesus says peace be still and here immediately there was peace and calm and you know the verse beautifully says mark chapter 4 was 41 and they were filled with great fear and said to one another who then is this oh you you followed jesus without knowing who he was and now they are surprised to see that at his command the seas and the wind obeyed that even the wind and the sea obey him the disciples were shocked that the seas and the winds obeyed jesus now whoever you are as you have entered into the new year there are still a lot of anxieties in your heart the god put in my heart to tell you that you make a list of all those things that you have prayed for you're striving for you're struggling for but you have not placed it at the feet of jesus just place it and the lord will take care of it psalm 46 verses 1 and 7 says god is our refuge god is our refuge what does it mean when you are in trouble all you need to do is to run into that refuge instead of trying to do things by yourself just run and be still the lord will do great things in your life so you can be rest assured that if you will trust god and trust his word you will always have victory according to the word that is preached today shall we pray a loving heavenly father we thank you for giving us this beautiful day this beautiful new year to thank you to praise you to worship you for all that you have done for us lord at this time lord jesus help us to stop striving struggling but to place it at your feet and lord look to what you can do about our situation you will give us victory because that is your promise father I pray for every beloved person who has joined in this worship i pray that every anxiety every stress every pressure that is there upon them will be released as they place everything at your feet in jesus precious name we pray amen let's continue to worship the lord let's tell him lord how much we love you for all that you have done for us we thank you and praise you lord oh how i love jesus oh how i love jesus we sing the song together there is a name i love to hear i love to sing its word it sounds like music in my ear the sweetest name on earth oh how i love jesus oh how i love jesus oh how i love jesus because he first loved me one more time oh how i love jesus
love me Tells me of a Savior's love Who died to set me free It tells me of His precious blood The sinner's perfect plea Oh, how I love Jesus Oh, how I love Jesus Oh, how I love Jesus Because He first loved me Father had in store for every day And though I tread a darksome path He'll sunshine all the way Oh, how I love Jesus Oh, how I love Jesus going to be afraid of anything this year I'm going to rise up I'm going to go and I'm going to conquer because my Lord has already conquered he's conquered every foe the Bible says the last enemy to be conquered is death if Christ has conquered death everything else has already been conquered and I'm going to walk in victory Shall we sing this medley of choruses? I will arise and go forth in the name of the Lord of hosts, for he has conquered every foe by his name, by his name. I will declare. He is the Lord, and in Him I am not afraid, for He has conquered every foe by His name. I will arise and go forth in the name of the Lord of hosts, for He has conquered every foe by His name. Jesus 
Jesus lifted me I'm so glad Jesus lifted me Oh, I'm so glad Jesus lifted me Singing glory, hallelujah Jesus lifted me Oh, I'm so glad Jesus lifted me I'm so glad Jesus lifted me Oh, I'm so glad Jesus lifted me Singing glory, hallelujah Jesus lifted me When I was discouraged Jesus lifted me When I was discouraged Jesus lifted me When I was discouraged Jesus lifted me Singing glory, hallelujah Jesus lifted me By His grace and mercy Jesus lifted me In His loving kindness Jesus lifted me Through His great salvation Jesus lifted me Singing glory, hallelujah Jesus lifted me Oh, I'm so glad Jesus lifted me Oh, I'm so glad Jesus lifted me Oh, I'm so glad Jesus lifted me Singing glory, hallelujah Jesus lifted me All the way to glory Jesus lifted me To my heavenly mansion Jesus lifted me To His wondrous presence Jesus lifted me Singing glory, hallelujah Jesus lifted me Oh, I'm so glad Jesus lifted me I'm so glad Jesus lifted me Oh, I'm so glad Jesus lifted me Singing glory, hallelujah Jesus lifted me Singing glory, hallelujah Jesus lifted me In this year, we're going to tell the Lord right up front in the beginning, Lord, I want your will to be done in my life. Not my will. I want your perfect will to be done in my life. That is the safest. Whatever you desire, at the end of it, you tell the Lord, Lord, I want your will, I want your way in my life. Let's sing a song. the potter and I am the clay mold me and make me after thy will while I am waiting yielded and still have thine own way Lord have thine own way Touch me and try me, Master, today. Whiter than snow, Lord, wash me just now. As in Thy presence, humbly I bow. Have Thine own way, Lord, have Thine own way.
heavenly father we thank you for giving us yet another new year and a new day to worship you father now i pray that your presence your word will touch heal deliver empower your people help us to go through this year lord in a walk of victory help us to live life the way you lived to please your heavenly father we submit lord to your lordship in jesus precious name we pray amen <laughs>